Yeah, uh, yeah. I learned that. Uh, I learned that uh, O'Neill's dead. Bowden's Turnbull's dead. Kovacs, Kovacs is badly wounded. Hendershot's wounded, and uh, uh, really, they, they well, they had no, they had no, no strong people. Uh, not, none of the, uh, none of the, none of the uh, high-ranking right. no, people were still, were still navigating, and uh, so it's just a matter of trying to, trying to get it organized. And then, and then there was a firefight going on too, and and one platoon, one platoon was still under fire. And these Japs, they, 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 the Japs, the snipers up in, the, in these banyan trees, were just giving them fits. And they couldn't do anything about it. So we got some, we got some machine guns moved up there, and we eventually got that taken care of. And I kind of helped, helped get that done. But uh, it, it was, it, it, it's just a bad day. Uh, a couple of things. Number one. Did you guys have any flamethrowers in those days? Any the Guam or there? Yeah, uh, I we didn't uh, we didn't in our in my company we didn't uh, uh, the regiment uh, or division did, and I I frank I don't know we didn't uh, we didn't use flamethrowers uh, in the part of the action I saw, but I don't flamethrowers were in use. And, and in a rifle company, rifle company, uh, or an infantry battalion being 800 to 1,000 men, a company being 200 approximately, battalion being four companies, let's say approximately 800, there, there weren't flamethrowers there. But in a, I, I, it, 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 regiment and division, regiment had, did have flamethrowers. But I, I didn't. I was directly involved in it. The other thing I was going to uh, ask, or we'll talk about a little bit, uh, as I understand it, uh, you know, when the Japanese and the Germans, for instance, lost their officers and leaders and things, they were really kind of in a chaotic situation. Whereas a lot of times, a lot of the Americans, your corporals or whoever. You'd have somebody, a strong guy, that yeah. would kind of take over yeah. and do that, and that was a little bit more, that worked a little bit better, I think, in the American Army than it did some of those other ones where they just kind of went by the numbers and it was a little bit more Oh, I, I think so. Americans. I think that's right, yeah. I think that's right. Did you have such a thing as battlefield commissions? Uh, the not, Army did. No, that. no, not, not, not really. Not to my knowledge. Uh, now, uh, uh, someone someone who did a who who did a uh, uh, good job would be recommended might be recommended for promotion or recommended to to, to become an officer. Uh, but I don't I don't it wasn't right on the spot. Uh, in other words, here's a good sergeant. Okay, you've done a wonderful job. You're now a lieutenant. Not that. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how that was handled, but uh, certainly, certainly those who who performed, who did the job, went up the line. Did you make some of those recommendations for some of your people? Well, I I uh, I don't remember recall doing that specifically, uh, but. No, I, I think that kind of no. I, I, I to answer your question, Dave. No, I don't. I don't remember doing that. Uh, can you give us a brief synopsis of what your citation says? I, I tell you, I'm gonna, I'm going to, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get it to you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. It, it, it gives me credit. It gives me credit for, for, uh, for taking command of a, of a company, of a unit that was uh, uh, needed, needed, needed some leadership at the time. So what time of the day did you get over there with them then? Uh, oh, probably.
probably this, this probably happened about uh, the time. This pro pro probably happened around midday. I'm guessing. Uh, and of course, see, it would get it get it get dark so doggone early because some places you could you could you could hardly see the sky. So you can imagine when that sun that sun's this way. It's a lot different from when that baby's two or three hours from setting because then it got dark, dark early. So how long did it take for you got things in a somewhat calm situation there? Well, well, it 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 was uh, it it was probably uh, I would say probably the next day. The next day, I think we had things pretty well under control because we'd got. We'd gotten the, uh, we'd, we'd taken care of, I don't know how many snipers there were, but, but it was just a, it was just a chaos. It was a mess and the company was trying to move forward through that area and these snipers were picking off. And there again, they're picking off. If they didn't see anybody who looks like he's in command, that's the one they're, that's the one they're going to try and pick sure. off. And I can just see. I can just see my friends that were real leaders saying, "All right, move forward here," and that, and that guy, that guy's picked off by one of those snipers. Uh, when did you receive your Navy Cross, and where? Well, I got a. I, I was I was recommended for a. I was recommended for a. Uh, Recommended for Navy Cross, and it was changed, cut back to a Silver Star. So I got the Silver Star. That was, I got a picture of that. Uh, that was on Wall on Wall Canal. Then, I mean, Wall Canal. God dang, it was sweaty. And <laughs> it was hot and humid. Anyway, it's on parade. I say parade ground. It's not parade ground. It's field. It is no dirt field. And then <coughs> in after the war, about two years after the war, maybe a year after the war, <coughs> I got a letter from Marine Corps saying that it had been it had been they were gonna replace the Silver Star with a Navy Cross. And uh, so somebody, some officers coming over from Louisville and he's going to present me a Navy Cross for placing the Silver Star that the records had been reviewed and it should have been a Navy Cross. So this is when you were back in Evansville. Yeah, that's when I'm back in Evansville. So I go down to the old post office, yeah. down the Marine, down the Marine recruiting office. This captain from Louisville pins that Navy Cross on the chest, and they asked. They asked for the Silver Star back. So I had it there. I gave it back to them. But that's how that happened. So, do you remember uh, when they dropped the atomic bomb? More or less. Yeah. And I, but I, I don't. I don't remember where I was. Well, yeah. I can't remember. I can't. I can't remember that. It's. It's not like. It's not like uh, December 7, right. 1941. But before that happened, you were thinking that you're probably going to end up back over there, overseas? Yeah. yeah. Well, I ended up at the end of the war, I was seagoing. I was commanding oh. officer of Marine Detachment aboard the Franklin D. Roosevelt. Right That's the biggest ship afloat then. Actually, it was aircraft carrier. Right. And they, uh, the Marines on there, are there gunners on the, on the, on the guns? Is that well, basically what you're talking about? The Marine, do? for some, for some reason, there's always been. I say always, going back, I don't know how many, hundred years. There's always been a Marine detachment aboard aircraft carrier, battleship, cruiser, and we had, and yes, they man a, they man a gun battery. But primarily, or at least on well, the Franklin D. Roosevelt, it seemed like all we did was uh, we were ceremonial. We had all the ceremony, and it's kind of it 
in my opinion. Well, I, I think they, they, they've either done away with it or are going to do away with it. But tradition has always called for a Marine detachment aboard a capital. Yeah. I noticed that all the Navy bases, like when I was at North Island, when I was there, they always had Marines at the guard gates. Yeah. And now when I go, I notice that they've got Navy guys there. So I don't know if Well, I, that, 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 maybe that has changed. But I know aboard ship, I had a detachment of about 100 men, and we're, we had Eleanor Roosevelt and Harry Truman aboard that ship. It seemed like every time you turn around, <coughs> and we handle all the ceremony. And of course, it was considered a plum assignment. You know, uh, I, 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 it was considered a, it was considered a plum, and I, it was the end of the war, it was the end of the war, and I, I was having a good time. Now where, where, where was it? Where was it? Uh, uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard. They sent us to, uh, they sent us to. Uh, Rio to inaugurate their new president. They sent us down there, to, but it's strictly, or, I, or my main recollection is ceremony. But if if uh, war, we we would have manned a uh, we'd have manned a gun battery. Um, so uh, when did you get out of the Marine Corps then? Uh, for, uh, uh, May of 46. <clears throat> oh, okay. So, after the war was over, so you were still in for a while. Uh, well, I made the mistake. I made the mistake staying in the reserves. And the congressman, you remember well the uh, old hospital on the west side? Yeah. That became the Navy oh. Marine Reserve Training Center. And the Congress, our congressman, a guy named Ed Mitchell, said to me, Paul, he said, we're forming a, they're going to have a form a Marine Reserve unit, and I want you to <coughs> sign up and be command of it. Anyway, <laughs> I said yes. So, <coughs> in 1950, our units called up Korea. So I, <coughs> I did not go to Korea. <coughs> I went to Marine Corps Recruit Depot and trained recruits and second lieutenants for a year and a half. Where was that? San Diego? San Diego, yeah. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so I, I might add that I the commanding general of the recruit depot in San Diego <coughs> was a friend of mine from World War II, and I must admit, I let him know I'd been called back. Because <laughs> I got to our unit, went by train cross country, went to Pendleton, and, uh, and then from there they went all different directions, but a lot of them went right to Korea. And I went to San Diego, I was chicken, and trained boots and second lieutenants for a year and a half. <coughs> There's some water there if you'd like. Yeah, so yeah. That will say I brought that up a little while ago. For you. Had the Marine Corps changed much in from when you first went in till then? I mean, your training <coughs> aspect and stuff like that. I'm convinced. I'm convinced, Dave, that the Marine Corps is stronger now than ever before. Uh, I've had, I've been to back to Recruit Depot and uh, was invited back a year ago to, to reviewing officer for a, <coughs> a Marine uh, uh, recruit graduation. And I was very, very favorably impressed. They have a Marine recruit training, you know, the Army and the Navy, the boys and girls go through boot camp together. That's no good. Marine Corps doesn't. And Marine Corps recruit training is very, very intense. And the women, I mean, the women are tough too. But I think I think the other branches made a terrible mistake. Don't you? I oh, mean, I how, so. how can you have a boot camp? With a little boy, boys, little girls with them. But anyway, yeah, Marine Corps, uh, I think, stronger than ever. 
So when you got it, you went back to Evans. Now you you met um, Dell in out here in California, and did you get married out here or back in Evans? Yeah, yeah, got married here in Pasadena. <coughs> yeah, oh she, yeah she. And so, was there a decision to make whether you stay in California or go back to Evansville? Time or what? No, no, we were we were going back there, and. Uh, she, that was well accepted. <coughs> I might add, she likes she likes being out here in the winter now. She thinks this is even nicer than being in Evansville in the winter. <laughs> or being in Florida. Well, yeah. And it is. Oh, it, it is. is. Absolutely. Um, do you have any children? Yeah, four daughters. What are their names? Well, I got Kathy, number one. Kathy's in Houston. And Gail, number two, in Indianapolis, G-A-Y-L-E. Number three is Annie in Sacramento, California. And the baby is Laura. She's in Lapeer, Michigan, L-A-P-E-R, -E Michigan. How many and grandchildren? How many grandchildren? We've got eight grandchildren, two, two son-in-laws. Uh, the, Did the kids come out here to see you when you're out here much? Yeah, we, <clears throat> we've been pretty successful, Dave, in getting them, getting them uh, all come out Christmas week. We rent a place right across Fairway from us, Christmas week. Where do you, where do you live out here? Monterey Country Club. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just played, played and, golf uh, there Monday. You what? I played golf there Monday. <laughs> oh, played in a scramble. Oh, it was oh for the jazz? Uh, no, this oh. is for the Sarah Club, the, the Catholic... Uh, uh, it's called Sarah Cliff oh, Church. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you? Yeah. yeah. yeah it was fun. In fact, I had a condo there a long time ago, too. In Monterey? Uh -huh. Is that right? In Santa Barbara Circle. Is that right? We are. Yes, Where, uh, what street do you live on? We're on, uh, we're on uh, Castellana, Castellana North on, on uh, <coughs> numbers uh, 6 South, 5 Par. Yeah. It's... Uh, we we used to go to uh, used to go to Florida in the winter. A golf group or another uh, three other couples vacation. And Dell's mother bought a place at Monterey when it was built in uh, twenty two years ago. It so was, then they had a a lottery. You had to go to Rancho Las Palmas just to draw a, a get a, a number. To get in line to, to buy a place when it, they were is first, that right? yeah, because that's how I got. Mine. Is it, that right? It was really something. Yeah. So uh, we started coming out here, and needless to say, I like it better in Florida. If anybody it doesn't, you, you don't have the better have his head exactly. You don't have the bugs and the humidity oh, and stuff no. like that. Yeah. And so hurricanes, been, hurricanes. <laughs> yeah, right. We just have a few earthquakes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I think they talk about earthquake here, but I don't know. Built on sand. Yeah, we're one story built on sand. I don't see. I don't see. I end up you gotta get hurt too all. bad. But I play. I play tennis about three or four times a week, and work out three or four times. Play golf about twice a week. So I, I don't have time for anything else. <laughs> Let's go back to, okay, so you guys went back, they got married, um, and so what did you do when you first went back to Evansville? Well, I went, went in church business with my dad, and uh, yeah, I was... Uh, did you play much golf and tennis back in Evansville? Oh, I've kind of played at golf for then tennis for a long time. Uh, I've, <clears throat> I've been playing in some of these 80 singles tournaments out here, oh, yeah. tennis tournaments. Oh, yeah. I, I don't have any athletic ability, but, I, but I've got good knee. I never had a sore knee in Did my life. Did you play over at Mission Hills when they had just last week? Yeah. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. I played in that senior tournament. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I live, we live at Mission Hills, so that's, you live that's, that's where Hill. I play tennis all the time. Yeah. You, I, but, you still play tennis? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah we'll, have to, we'll have to play some. I play on the grass. I love playing on the grass. Well, I'm, I've that's been it. playing on clay out at yeah, the gardens, mm -hmm. out at the Indian Wells gardens. Yeah. And I've got a guy who's a member out there. We play on clay, and it's uh, we 
play dead even, which is kind of nice. Yeah. You find a guy singles who play even with you. Yeah. Boy, that's perfect. Yeah, I love to play singles. Uh, so, uh, where, where did you uh, where did you play golf in Evansville? Uh, Evansville Country Club. My uncle uh, played golf, and uh, he was the first one that kind of showed me a little bit about it. He played at uh, well, Helfer and Fender, you know. Who was so that? It was my my uncle. His name was uh, Earl Thompson. Uh huh. Uh, Well, golf's a good game, but it's uh, it's if if you're having a bad game, it's a long day on the course. You're four four and a half hours. And Me, it's a. I mean, I played sports all my life. I love all kinds of sports, but uh, I think golf's the most difficult to yeah. get good at. Yeah. <laughs> I had a for some crazy reason <clears throat> this year. Uh, I don't know why. In January. I shot my age three times, and, yeah. and I'm not really, you know, I shot, I shot, well, one time, I shot one under my age with two triple bogeys. I had 80 with two triples. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm a, but I'm back on my game now. I, they called me a sandbagger for a while. That was, that was the best compliment I ever had. <laughs> So you started coming out here about 20 some odd years yeah, ago? Yeah, about, mm -hmm. started yeah. coming out here about 80, uh, 80, 81, I'm guessing, and we rented about three or four years. We bought in 85. And, and where's your home in Evansville? Where do you live? Uh, on Browning Road, which is uh, McCutcheonville, mm -hmm. north of town. Right, yeah. 11 to 10 miles north. My, I grew up out by St. Joe, out on Highway 65. Oh, did you? Road. Yeah. Uh, I, I used to play. I played tennis uh, for about ten years with a friend, a friend of yours, by the name of Ron Wanamuller. Oh yeah, sure. He was a year ahead of me. Yeah, yeah Uncle nice Ron. Uh, nice. I called him. Yeah. Nice curly-haired guy. Yeah. His uh, cousin Larry Wanamuller and I were best. We were in the same class together. We were best friends, and, and Larry was on the golf team. It's funny. I didn't play any golf. You know, growing up. You know, we always thought of golf and tennis as being a sissy sport. Yeah, you know, so that's I right. Played football and basketball yeah. and stuff. And, and but finally, just as I was getting out of high school, uh, my two best friends were on the golf team, so they would take me out, and I was just terrible, you know. And I'd hit the ball and go sideways and everything, you know. And they they shoot in the seventies all the time, you know. And I'd be lucky to break a hundred. Well, about four or five years ago, I went back home, and we went out and I, we went out and played. And I had my best round ever. I shot like 73, and they both shot like 81 or 82. So it was oh, was that fun. fun? That was really fun. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's good. well, it's sure nice to have you out here. I'm well, I, I've enjoyed it. it. Yeah. I, I uh, uh, sorry, I, I don't have any. Uh, I couldn't make that. I couldn't make that war experience. Oh, it was plenty exciting but, for anybody. But I can I get there. that. I can Look at get that. that to you, Mason. Sure. Read it. Yeah. Paul, thanks so much. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank David. You very much. Enjoyed it. Bill, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. Bill, did you have anything else you would want to ask him, uh, Paul? Or uh, no. I, um, did you say you were here permanent now? No. We, well, we're here from we're here from November to May oh, each year. Okay. We drive out. Drive out November, back in May. I say we. My wife drives every mile. She won't let me drive. <laughs> but as I tell her, I'm a navigator, and that's very important. That's right. Besides, I have to do my crossword puzzles. Uh, does she uh, play golf or tennis? She you plays know? golf. Does know. she? Yeah. So you guys play together sometimes? Uh, some, some, but uh, little girls. They kind of look at golf differently. I mean, they <laughs> don't take it quite as seriously. They want to. She can't understand why I don't want to play golf with her on a regular basis. Uh, <laughs> and you don't really want to explain no, to her. No. I tell you, <laughs> it's not a good idea. No. One of Remember, my, the camera's still rolling here. <laughs> one, one of my good friends. Uh, yeah, one of my good friends. Uh, 
refers to Sunday golf, couple golf, you know, Sunday, as the Baton Death March. <laughs> and the little girls, they fail to see the humor in that. <laughs> And I, I assume that you met Bob Barthel uh, being both of you in insurance. Is that how you got together? Yeah, insurance. And, and uh, Bob was, uh, Bob was, was uh, pretty active in politi Republican politics. And I, <clears throat> I was not active like he was, but I, I was a very close friend of Bob Orr, mm -hmm. who was our governor for eight years. And uh, Bob worked on Bob Orr's. Bob Barthel worked on Bob Orr's behalf, so, <clears throat> but I, now I play tennis, play tennis with Bob. Have you played tennis with him? I have, <laughs> yeah. I had him over to the grass a couple times, and, uh, yeah, he's fun, he's, I mean, oh, yeah. I wouldn't want to play with him every day, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think he's fun. Well, I, I prefer singles better for me, and, uh, I like, a, I like fast, you know, action singles. Yes. Bob, kid, Bob is deliberate, <laughs> and he's always wounded. He's wounded about half the time. He's got a groin pull or a hamstring. I said, Bob, why do you want to be wounded like that? Why don't you work out and strengthen those muscles? He doesn't like my counseling. <laughs> Where do you work out, by the way? Well, I I work out at, at Palm Valley. Uh, we have a Monterey and Palm Valley are their American golf is I don't know if you guys are familiar with American yeah. golf, but they're in I don't know, I think they're in financial they're in, well, I know they're in financial trouble, so I don't know what it's gonna be next year, but they we have uh, we have reciprocal privileges. Not for the golf, but we do for their uh, fitness. They got a marvelous fitness center. So I go over there about three times. I notice that uh, I go back to Evansville about once a year now. That as I'm going back, well, Bob and I will both probably be there. My our 45th high school reunions this year, so I oh, are you? we have them every five years. So you're going back this year. Mm -hmm. My mom lives. Uh, uh, she sold. My dad passed away three or four years ago, and she sold our farm that we had out there. And she's out on Green River Road and Lynch Road, kind of right in there. There's a kind of a retirement. Uh, Oh, I know. They're the sure low. Know. It's yeah. really nice. And yeah, oh, yeah. She's 87 now, and she's Isn't she walks nice? three or four miles every day, and she walks right. to church, and she you know, she's got macular degeneration, so she can't drive anymore. I know. But I, she know takes, I know right where that is. Green yeah. River and Lynch. I go by there, Green River Road, going to Rocket Club, uh, mm -hmm. three times a week. Yeah. Yeah. But I've noticed that I think the economy is pretty good in Evansville now. It seems like yeah, everything's very, really growing. Very good. It's very strong. Big now. Toyota plants right. meant a lot to the back in Evansville. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll see you back there. Well, I hope so. All right. Okay, that's well, great. We'll wrap her up then. Let's take a look at it. Be sure. Okay, I'm going to give this to you just the way that it is.